Good morning, everybody. I hope you are doing well. I am so happy to be here this morning. And I am here to answer all questions. And we are covering money market funds. There's so many questions I've received over, over time. I know there's a, you know, a short video I had done um, about two years ago on money market funds. But somebody actually called me and said, I've watched this thing, but I want more. So I have compiled all the questions that I've received over time. And I'll be answering them today. Uh, so if you have any questions, by the way, because it's live, you can continue to uh, post them. So we are live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. In case this is the first time you're meeting me, my name is Rena Hicks. And you are watching MoneyWise. So let's begin. I mean, some of you may be wondering, OK, so what are money market funds? What are those? What are we even talking about? So let me explain what these are. Money market funds are pooled funds so there's people we call fund managers who money who manage money and so what they do is they pull funds together from different investors small ones large ones institutions and pull funds together in what we call a money market fund and they then invest this money in very conservative opportunities they invest, they invest the money in treasury bills they invest the money in deposits with banks, and they invest the money in companies in what we call commercial paper. So they lend money to solid companies with strong cash flows who need money for short periods of time. And they make sure that they're lending this money to companies that are very strong so that they don't lose the money. And because they're conservative, what happens is your money is usually safe. And what happens is that they invest the money for short periods of time, usually less than one year, so that whenever anybody in the pool wants to withdraw, they actually can withdraw the money easily. So they invest the money in cash and cash, near cash opportunities. Okay, so what, why should I invest in a money market fund? Why should I even bother? You know, I, I want to share a story to help you understand the fact that, guys, money should never, ever, ever lie idle. Never lie idle. I was talking to somebody and they had over 1 million shillings in a current account. Why? Because it gives them security and just that feeling of safety. Current accounts, actually you lose money because there's zero interest and there's usually ledger fees that are charged uh, every single month. So how is it that a million shillings is sitting in an account earning nothing? A million shillings in a money market fund will earn you something like 250 shillings every single day. So here's the thing. There's a story I once heard, um, actually read, and it was set a long, 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 long time ago when they used what we call talents to represent money. And so there was this guy who was a master, and he was going on a long trip, and he said, you know what, guys, to his servants, there were three of them, I am leaving, and I'm going on a very long journey for a long time, and so I'm going to leave you with some of my possessions. I will, with one uh, of his servants, he gave them five talents, and five talents in today's terms is actually worth about 56 million shillings if you earn 100,000. So five talents is 15 years worth of your annual income. 15 years. So he gave him five. That's how many years? 45 years worth of money given to this guy. So if you earn 100,000 shillings, it works out to, how much is that? 54 million shillings. To the second guy, he was given uh, two talents. That's worth about 36 million. And the last one was given one talent. That works out to about 18 million. So each was given according to the ability, according to the story. So the guy said, okay, so here's your money. I'm off on my way. I'll be back. So many years later, he came back and said, okay, guys, come back. Let's see what have you done with the money I gave you. So when they came back, the one who was given 56 million worth of money had 56 million more, double. The one who was given 36 million worth had 36 million more. And the guy was like, fantastic. You guys are amazing, faithful servants. You've done so well. Congratulations, high five. I will give you even more responsibility because of what you've done for me. The one who was given the one talent, which is worth about 18 million shillings, was like, you know what? I know you are a hard guy. You just give us stress. And I was afraid. I was so scared, I decided to bury mine. So I dug a hole, I put the 18 million here. In fact, you know what, it's so awesome, here's the 18 million back. The master looked at him and said, excuse me, 18 million, and you've done nothing with it, you should have put my money in my bank to at least earn interest. And he called him, you, you wicked, wicked, wicked servant. Why, why didn't you even think about putting the money in the bank? So the story basically is that you cannot, with whatever it is in your hand, whether it's 100 shillings or 10 million or 500 million, you cannot have it sit somewhere and earn nothing. Money should never, ever, ever lie idle. 
And so this is where money market funds come in and why I think it's important to put money market fund, money in a money market fund. Every single one of us, every one of us, whether you are a janitor, whether you are a teacher, whether you're a doctor, whether you're an investor, whatever it is you are, you must have a money market fund that can enable you to grow your money as you think about where to put it. It's a great place to park money because it's earning interest daily. Not like your savings account or your fixed deposit account or any other instrument. It earns money daily. So now, let me get into the questions um, that were asked so that then we can, you know, sort of answer the questions that you kind of currently have. So the, the, one of the questions is, how is the money market an investment? So it's an investment because, what is an investment? It's an investment because you put money away into something, an asset that you hope will go up in value. And when it goes up in value, then you can sell it and earn an interest or a profit. And hopefully the profit you earn will compensate you for the inconvenience of having to deny yourself from enjoying the money now and waiting maybe for a year or two, because then you earn more and are able to enjoy more benefit because you waited. It also needs to compensate you for inflation. So it's an investment because when you look at the interest rates that are offered by money market funds, they are higher than inflation. Inflation in Kenya, I think in September, it was about 4.2%. On average, this year, it's been about 5%. And so if it's, you're earning you know, seven, nine percent, then guess what? You're doing better than inflation and it's an investment. And then the last thing is an investment is something that not only compensates you for the time you are, you know, waiting to enjoy and also for inflation, it also needs to compensate you for risk. So what risk are you taking? And is it giving you a return that is worth that risk? So with money market funds, the, 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 it does actually compensate you for risk because if it's risk free, such as, investing with the government, the return will be something like 6%, but now it's giving you a bit higher. So your average returns in Kenya range between about uh, 8, so let me say 7% to about 10%. On average, most of them are between 8 to 9% per annum return. And so they compensate you for the risk that you're putting in because you could actually lose the money. But it's very rare to hear of people losing money in a money market fund because they're very conservative. And you know what? They diversify their investments. So for example, when a fund manager pulls money together, typically in Kenya, they won't just invest in one bank and in one treasury bill and in one. They diversify. So they'll actually put the money in different banks and they invest in tier one banks. So the top banks mainly is where they put the money. And they are actually not allowed by law to put more than 25% of their money in one single bank, which means if one single bank collapses and they have their money there, the maximum they can lose is 25% of the investment. So the maximum you can lose is 25, but really you will not lose because we don't have banks collapsing at the moment. And they don't put 20, nobody, I don't think there's any fund manager who puts 25% of the investment in one bank, to be honest. And so they really do diversify, which makes it safe. It's actually one of the most conservative opportunities that you can put your money in at the moment. And imagine there's risk in everything. There's no one who can guarantee you any returns. And in order to make money, you have to take some risk at some point in time. Otherwise, you will never, ever grow your wealth because risk is part of the process. And so if you put your money in the bank, imagine that bank can actually collapse and you lose 100% of how much you put in. But if you put in a money market, you're sure that even if the bank collapses that the money market fund has invested in, then you will not lose all your money. But, you know, I think you get the picture because, you know, banks are not collapsing. <laughs> um, then we have another question. Um, the risks. And the question is, what are the risks of investing in money market funds? So first of all, I think as I've mentioned earlier, the funds are not guaranteed. And so there's a possibility if we have a collapse in the financial sector in Kenya, which is not happening, but in just let's, let's assume it does, then you could lose your money. And really, if you had your money in any financial institution, if there's a collapse in the entire system, then you could actually lose your money. So that's one of the risks. But it's very extreme and it's actually quite rare. Uh, the next question, I mean, the next risk is what else could happen? I mean, what, what is the other risk that somebody can face? And it's the fact that returns are actually calculated daily. And so the thing is that the money market funds are managed by fund managers who are constantly every 
all the time looking for opportunities to grow the money that they are managing. So sometimes they find greater opportunities and are able to do really well and they'll earn you know, higher rates. But then there's other times the opportunities are not so great. So let's say like now we have treasury bills that have come down to 6%. I remember about three or four years ago, there was a time the treasury bill, the one year treasury bill was at 20% per annum. And so at that time we were earning like 21, 22% in the money market fund. But today the return is about 9%. Why? Because interest rates have come down. And so the rates move every other day every week the rates change so like today if you look at the newspaper and you go into the business section and see the whole list of money market funds available they'll show you the average rate until today for the year they'll show you the, the you know the last yield but it doesn't promise you tomorrow's yield and so that's the risk and the risk is that if inflation also goes up that's the last risk if inflation increases for some reason and goes to like seven or eight percent and your money market fund offers you less return then you know you're really not making money from um, from an inflation perspective and inflation is a general rise in prices of goods and services so if today you buy bread at 100 shillings for example a year from today the bread will be not 100 shillings, but 105, because in Kenya, inflation is 5%. And so if your investment is giving you 4%, you will have 104 shillings and will not be able to buy the bread that's 105. And so we have to make sure that inflation is um, usually lower. So our investment must give us a higher return than inflation. So the risk here is that inflation could go high and your money market fund doesn't offer you as much return. So those are the risks. Let's see what the other questions were. So what are the benefits of investing in a money market fund? So look at um, this situation. Basically, if you open an account, you can actually withdraw your money with giving only two to three days notice. Two to three days notice, no questions asked, money is wired into your account. That's how it works. They don't hold your money. Anytime you need it back, you send an email and within two to three working days, money is back. For most money ma market funds, uh, what happens is that if you open a new account, you must have your money in there for at least two weeks. Because what happens is they just need to make sure that you're not laundering money. And so if you have it there for about two weeks, they've done their whole process of checking that you're, you know, the source of your funds and all of that. And you're not just passing through your money there um, for you know, reasons that are not kosher, then they will give you back your money whenever you need it, which makes it really, really convenient. Then returns. The average savings rate in Kenya today is about 4.1% per annum. So this includes fixed deposits, just a regular savings account. On average in Kenya, you'll earn about 4%. Yes, 4%. Inflation is 5%. Okay, in September it was 42 but still, you're really not doing anything if your money is in a, in a regular savings account earning that. So it's higher than inflation and it's actually higher than even the treasury bill rate. The treasury bill rate for six, I think for three months is about 6.7% uh, per annum. Treasury bills are risk free, right? So you will get your money back. And so that's why the return for a money market fund is higher because there's a component of risk, but still you will get higher return, which is great. So that's another benefit. Um, so, I think one of the things that you must do when it comes to money market funds is take time to think through who do I invest in? Because you can't just open the newspaper, see who has the highest rate, because that's what we tend to do. We tend to look at who is offering the highest rate and then decide to invest with them. The problem with doing that is the fact that you will end up going with those who are higher and those who are higher don't necessarily mean it's the best. The higher the return, I, I always say this, the higher the return, the higher the expected risk that you're taking. And so be careful to just check if the return is higher, you can investigate further and find out where do you invest investors' money? Where are you putting money? And you can ask uh, the different funds that are available. If they're not transparent, that's a red flag. They should be able to tell you where they're investing in your mon their, the money that they have in the money market funds because that's going to help you understand whether or not you should put your money there. Um, so the other, the other thing that you need to check, um, first of all, is that it's a solid company. So you need to evaluate, is this a company that is solid, that's run by people who understand how to manage investments? You know, who are they? Who, who is behind this company? Are they trustworthy people? Because if they're not, 
and they don't have a good track record as individuals, then that's an issue in and of itself. And then secondly, what return are they offering? Is it realistic? Is it reasonable? Because if it's not reasonable, then uh, you need to ask a few questions. And so you can check how reasonable it is by looking at the treasury bill rate. So the, the government usually borrows money from the public and from investors, institutions, uh, and all kinds of investors. Every single month, the, the government is constantly issuing what we call treasury bills and treasury bonds. And so they give a return. So if anybody in the money market fund space is giving you less than what the government is giving you, you have no business investing with them. You're better off investing in a treasury bill rate because they're higher risk. So why are you going to take a lower return for something that is higher risk? So if it is lower than 6.7%, for example, which is the three month, the short one, the three month treasury bill, then you might as well just lend the money to the government and reinvest your money in other ways as opposed to using a money market fund. On the other hand, if it is way higher than what you're getting with the government and also way higher than what others are offering, others being other money market funds, then you need to ask a few questions because how is it that this one company is offering such higher returns than the others? There must be something they're doing, which means they're investing in an opportunity that perhaps is higher risk, which then puts your money in higher risk. So I hope that makes sense. Then transparency here means they should be able to open up and tell you this is where we're investing our money. And so you can ask for what we call a fact sheet. Some people call it a tear sheet. And it's just a document that says, this is who we are. This is our fund manager. This is what we've done in, in the past. These are the current returns that we earn. And this is where we invest our money. <clears throat> and it's important for them to be able to share that. So um, how do you use a money market fund? How do you use a money market fund? So one of the ways you use a money market fund is for saving for emergencies. We all must save for emergencies. I mean, if there's nothing else the last few months have taught us, it's the fact that we need to have money saved somewhere just in case of emergencies. And money market funds are a great place to save for emergencies because you're earning a return as you continue to save. And the return is actually good given the fact that these are conservative opportunities. So you can invest very little money with 2,000 shillings. Some have 2,000 as the minimum, some have 5,000 as the minimum, some have 100 shillings as the minimum. So it doesn't matter what you do. Even if you have 100 shillings a month, I mean, if you divide that by 20, what's that? Five bob a day? Um, it's not much. So if you're able to save money and can come up with 100 shillings, imagine you can invest in a money market fund and earn at least 9%. So the amount that is needed is very little. So use it, save, and you continue to add more every week when you earn money. You have another 200 added, you have another 1,000 added, and you find that it begins to accumulate and you earn an interest on it. And so that's how you use it. Another way to use it is to save for projects or for something that you want to do, perhaps you want to get married and you have a wedding in a few months, start saving in a money market fund. Uh, and you can both, you and your partner, put money into it. And you can open a joint account and save together. And you will earn a lot more than you will in a savings account. And then the fact that you need two to three days to get your money is great because you won't quickly go and get it out because it's not so convenient. Or if you are looking to set a project uh, together, like a building project, you want to build a house, you're trying to save towards it, you need to start within the next three to six months. It's a great place to park the money as you wait. And sometimes you don't even know what you want to invest in. And so as you think, maybe you get a windfall, you get paid for something or unexpected money, put it in a money market fund. Fund. The other day I got an email telling me that I've earned dividend for a certain company that I've invested in. Instead of putting that money in my account where I have a, a, a debit card, I put it in a money market fund so that that way the money earns interest and I can start thinking through where else can I invest that money. Another thing that we use money market funds for is that it's very important, besides saving for an emergency, it's so important to have money somewhere for opportunities that you don't yet have. So even as you invest your money and you're continuing to put it in, you know, real estate, you've invested in the stock market, you've invested in all sorts of things, agribusiness, and you're doing all sorts of things. Cash is very important to have, and it's important to have cash reserves somewhere, just in case, just in case. 
I was, I was watching uh, something a few months ago. I think it was in the sec second of March or I can't remember. It was um, a talk, it was an, an AGM that was held by uh, Berkshire Hathaway. And Warren Buffett was talking about how he has to have liquid cash saved up for opportunities, but also for just in case. 30% of his assets, of the company's assets, are put in cash just for an ability to take uh, what I would say, bust a move. Whenever you need to make a move, invest in something, or there's an emergency, you have money available somewhere. And so as an investment strategy, it's important to have cash saved somewhere. So instead of putting it in a savings account, money market funds form a great place to be able to do that. So don't ignore them. I think every one of us, in my view, every single one of us, irrespective of how much you earn, needs to have one. So let's see what other questions we had. There was a question around fees. And the question was, how much should I be charged in terms of fees? So first of all, I must say, what happens is the rate that is usually charged or shown for most of them is net of fees. Yeah? So they usually have management fees, <clears throat> which is between 1% to 3%. But you need to be careful. Even after you've seen the, the return, it might show you 10% return per annum. But then it might not be net of fees. So when you pick up the phone or send an email to find out, ask, is it net of all fees? And then they will inform you. Usually it's net of all fees except inflation. I mean, except uh, withholding tax. Every single interest earning opportunity in Kenya usually is charged withholding tax of 15% of the interest that you earn. So usually what I'm talking about is fees charged by the fund manager. And management fees range from 1% to 3%. Okay, so you want to go with the one that charges the least fees. Um, so the, another question, okay, so I'm seeing questions coming through. Thank you so much, guys, for asking. What's currently happening with those who market their return range from 7%, same to Mshwari? Well, I guess that's what they're able to offer, right? So 7% is what they are comfortable to offer. However, 7% is a bit low, to be honest, for a money market fund. If it's 7%, I'd actually rather put my money with a treasury bill and 7.7, because that's what you will earn if you invest your money for a year, as opposed to 7%, because 7% is low, um, in my view. And I knew this question would come. Okay, Elud, hey, Rina, which is the best fund in Kenya? I have three of them that I personally love, three of them, because they charge low fees, generally. Um, okay, well, one of them charges the lowest fees. Uh, and then they have generally similar returns. They are solid in terms of, inst uh, you know, the size of the institution, the size of their balance sheet, the expertise of their team. Um, and I don't know whether to say it now or later, but um, there, there are three that I like. But that doesn't mean the others are not good. We have about... I don't know whether there are about 10 of them that are solid investment uh, companies that you can actually put money in. So first of all, let me describe the kind of companies that they are. They are usually um, companies that have an insurance element uh, or an insurance department. Most of them do, but some of them don't, and there's nothing wrong with those that don't. So typically you'll find that they are companies that invest money for the insurance companies and for pension funds and other investors. So some of the names, uh, and in no order of preference, are people like Britam, you have ICA, you have Sanlam, Nabo Capital, uh, you have people like... Um, uh, what am I forgetting? CIC Insurance uh, is, is another one of them. Uh, you have, um, who else is there? Old Mutual uh, as well. We have um, Amana Capital, uh, that's a, a smaller one. Uh, Zimele is another one. There's a whole list. In fact, if you just go to the newspaper, the whole entire list is there. So which one is the best? Oh my goodness, Elude. I don't, I, I can't say it's the best because what typically happens is Depending on the rates and the fees they have, you will choose, you know, which one to go with. And also, so what I've done is just sort of taken time to review. My personal best are three. One is Sanlam Investments. The second one is CIC. The third is Britam, in no order of preference. Those are my top three. So I have actually got accounts with all three of them. And I move my money to the different ones depending on who I feel at the time I want to invest in, depending on what they're offering in terms of rates. So there you go, Elude. 
And somebody, Martin, is asking, thank you, Martin, for the question. Good morning. You have mentioned in Kenya it's 9%. Is it possible to invest in other countries? And if yes, which country would you advise? Okay, so yes, it's possible to invest in other countries. However, I haven't done it myself, and so I don't know what the requirements would be and how it would be done uh, and which country I would advise. So for now, I, I would hesitate to give any advice where that's concerned because I really uh, don't actually know what the process of that would be and which country. So yeah, that's it. Um, so there's somebody asking... Uh, Hi, Rina. You're doing an incredible job. Thank you, Lillian. Keep it up. In Kenya, do we have a money market fund that I can invest hard currency? Yes, there is. I actually know only of one. And the one that I know is Nabo Capital. Nabo Capital has money market funds in both Kenya shillings and, mon and uh, in the US dollars. So the thing is, though, that their minimum is a million shillings, and you have to prove the source of funds. And so some of you have uh, income in US dollars, and you don't want to change your money or convert your money into Kenya shillings. And you can actually open an account with Nabu Capital and go ahead and invest in hard currency. Thank you for that question. Uh, another question, great discussion. When saving with money market funds, is it advisable to save with different companies? Say, for instance, you have with CIC and Britam. Does it make sense to do this? Yes, <laughs> is my quick answer. There's actually no, um, I think it's actually wise. I think it's wise to actually open different ones because you're diversifying. Should something happen with one, then you know you have another one that you can fall back on. I think it might get a bit more complicated if you start opening too many and trying to manage all of them. Um, and so if you open, say, two of them, there's nothing wrong with that. And you can continue to save with both as and when you want to. And it makes it, um, I guess, even for peace of mind, especially if you... For you, money is equal to security, and you're just like, I don't want to lose any money, and I'm afraid. So that will give you peace of mind if you invest in two different ones. But I must tell you, the, must, the thing you also must check, are they, are they um, licensed by the Capital Markets Authority and regulated by the Capital Markets Authority? before you invest they must be regulated by the capital markets authority the capital markets authority is a regulator for the industry and what they do is make sure that these guys are consistently doing the right thing making sure that they report what it is they're investing the money in and they just basically keep tabs to ensure that these companies are doing what they should and are not being irresponsible with managing third party funds and so please make sure that they are um, licensed and regulated so another question from Jane Wangi. Thank you for asking. Does FIDA offer money market fund service? What's the interest rates and what's the management fee? Thank you for the question, Jane. So what we've done, yes, we do. We offer. But what we've done, we've partnered uh, with money market fund uh, managers so that then we are able to offer to our clients. So we do have that. In fact, if you are interested in opening up, sometimes doing the research yourself can be a bit exhausting. And so we can actually um, open an account and help you open an account with a money market fund. It will be with that money market fund account. We will help you with opening the account, help you register, and help you with keeping tabs with what's happening. And if you do want to open an account, please do go ahead and send us an email, info, I-N-F-O, at fib.co.ke info at fib.co.ke just let us know i want to open a money market fund account and we'll help you open by the way guys if you have two thousand shillings two we can open the account for you so please go ahead and send your question i mean the email and we'll be able to get in touch with you send you the forms and you can open the account and yes and that comment is so true cash flow is king Cash is king. Uh, and so I don't even have anything else to add to that. Please mention your favorite money market fund. Thanks for the question. And I actually just did. I have three. I have three favorites. My three favorites are Britam, Sanlam, and CIC. Those are my personal favorites. Uh, because, you know, for like Sanlam charges very low fees. Um, they're solid. So is Britam. They're solid. So is CIC. CIC has the largest market share. Uh, in the country so not you know they're not my best but those are the three best I think those three are the ones I would go with um, so if you want to choose any of those you may go ahead and do so but there's a whole other list I'll just give you my personal favorite but there's a whole other list what I was saying earlier is that the key thing is to ensure that you assess 
assess who's behind this organization. Are they solid, credible people? Do they know what they're doing? Uh, number two, what is the history of the performance of the money market fund? Have they been giving consistent returns over time? How long have they been around? Because you don't want to go with some guys who just started off the other day and who are not regulated. So first of all, are they regulated? Make sure they're regulated before you just sign up with some people saying we have a money market fund, we're giving you 15% return. Be careful about that. Because what you're looking for with a money market fund is to park your money in a safe, secure place before you do something with it. Perhaps you want to invest it in something that can give you better returns uh, or for a longer period of time, but you're trying to think through it and evaluate your opportunities. As you're thinking, pack it in a money market fund, then you'll be able to invest in the opportunity mm -hmm. while your money continues to earn interest. So let's see whether there's any other question. Um, so now we're getting a bit specific. Wanjiro from uh, Facebook is asking, what is your comment on Genghis Capital? I'm not sure what the question there is. Genghis Capital is a company that is licensed by the Capital Markets Authority and they offer opportunities for investors. And so I don't have anything against Genghis Capital. I'd say do your research, talk to them, find out whether they have the product that uh, you are looking for. Um, so, so again, there's a whole list of them, right? There's a whole list of them. The key thing is to just check what are they offering you in terms of what is the money market fund structure? Uh, what is the return I'm getting? But return is not the first question you're asking, right? The first question is who's behind them and can I put my money with these people? Do I feel like I'm safe and secure investing in these guys? Are they credible people? When you search the names behind that opportunity, what comes up for you? And listen to your gut. If they're solid, they have a strong balance sheet, you know, if something happens to one of the investments, they are able to actually pay you back your principal at the worst. Those are the kind of companies you want to invest in. Yeah, I think, I think we have come to the end of the questions. I don't know if you have any more questions uh, with regard to money market funds, but really that's what they are. Again, please don't keep your money in an account that is not earning you any interest. Money should never, ever, ever lie idle. If you've had nothing else from the time I began, money should never lie idle. I mean, money market funds earn money daily, earn interest daily. So today is Friday. If I invest in my money market fund, I will earn money daily. If I withdraw it next week, Friday, I will have earned money. If you have a million shillings today sitting in a current account earning zero, you're losing out on an opportunity of earning about 250 shillings daily. In a month, that's money for fuel. Right? So please, money should never sit idle in an account. All right? Um, before I wind up, uh, I just want to check if there's any further questions. Um, <laughs> so there's a question about another investment uh, opportunity that have insane interest rates. Remember what I said earlier? For somebody offering you very, very high interest rates, that is an outlier. So everybody else is about here, but they're here. Please note this. The investing the money in an opportunity that is giving them higher returns. What does that mean? That means they are putting your money at higher risk. So the question you have to ask yourself, am I willing to take on more risk with this money that I have? If you are, then invest. If you are not, then please make a decision to invest in something that is less risky. Solid company, solid people behind it, low fees and um, conservative investments. So find out what are they investing your money in and then make a decision to go ahead. I um, actually have a book um, for anybody who's wondering, okay, besides money market funds, where else can I invest my money? And how else can I create wealth? How else can I grow my money? How else can I create an income for myself? I have a book that is called Money Wise, Create, Grow and Preserve Wealth. It's selling for a thousand shillings a copy and you can get yourself one. You, if you're not in Kenya, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it even on Kindle. And I will display a number, a phone number now on the screen that uh, you can actually call. You can call this number, you can WhatsApp this number. If you want to find out information about money market funds, you want to find out information about where, uh, how do they work? What about shares? What shares should I buy? How do they work? The book has information on what investment opportunities there are in an African context and with information on how can I evaluate the different opportunities that are available to me. You can buy the book and it's a very easy read and understand how these things work. 
And then lastly, if you want to invest in a money market fund and don't want to go through the hassle of trying to evaluate the different ones, we've already done that for you. Info at fib.co.ke and we will direct you to the right place and help you. In fact, we've put it on the screen. Info at fib.co.ke. That's the email address that you can email even right now and we'll be in a position to send back information, send you the forms and assist you with the process of making the application. No money should stay idle, guys. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. Have a wonderful weekend and we shall see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.